recently switched to Ember for electricity because Tesla Powerwall through energy locals in SA was uh, deprecated. Basically, they closed the program for some reason. I don't know. It was the best plan ever. But anyways, so I, I was looking around which plan to pick and end up with Ember. It's like been close to two months and I just got my first bill. Let me just break it down and all the pros and cons with the Ember. Uh, so as you can see, it was only 40 bucks and I have 10 kilowatt solar and Tesla Powerwall 2 uh, with like just normal 30.5 kilowatt uh, capacity. For the month of like uh, roughly it's September, it was $40 uh, after all the credits they applied. I'll show you in a second. And the way they charged is very interesting. So uh, network supply charge is roughly dollar a day. So it's $32 a month plus Amber fee is all this before GST. So after GST is going to be exactly $25 Amber fee and supply charge basically dollar a day and usage as whatever you use basically. This is Solar Experts. So this page is not that interesting. Uh, the interesting part is when you look at the breakdown, actually how it's all calculated. Break it down by usage, network supply charge and amber fee. So you have three components when you uh, get the bill. So for usage, it was roughly $80 and you can see how they break it down like uh, interesting so so many details uh, the supply charge is actually has two components network daily and meter and charge so they charge you for using smart meter like 37 cents a day before GST I didn't know that yeah so total is like roughly a dollar a day for network supply charges and amber fee is $25 after GST uh, so total was 150 and I think they applied a bunch of credits I don't even know what it is Government energy relief, I don't know, it was automatically applied, uh, $75, and referral, I remember one, so I have two referral fees, I think right now there is a promo where they give you $10 off for one year, if you sign up with a referral code, so I'll uh, add mine to the link as well, use it, yeah, save some money, 120 bucks a year, and yeah, so this is a breakdown, and in terms of Pros and cons. So they charge. Uh, let me just show you the app, and it's going to be much easier to see. This is a home page for the app. Now it's pretty cheap, six cents per kilowatt, and you can see uh, there is like forecast of the price. It's not guaranteed it's going to be this way, but more or less it's accurate. And uh, yeah, you can kind of like plan if you have like some heavy loads, when to charge, when to use it, stuff like that usage and this is your export so export is negative because there is a lot of renewables in the grid and you actually have to pay to export and amber has this feature curtainment basically they stopped solar production and they just match your house load when the prices are negative and so right now it's active and basically you can control it you can turn it off and on if it doesn't work properly but this is how it looks in the plan you can see there is like throughout the day the automation right now the uh, my solar is curtailed basically it does not generate uh, it's supposed to only follow the house load so if you turn on like let's say cattle during a day it will use exactly the amount of energy needed to boil that cattle and it's not going to export anything else in the grid assuming your battery is full by the time if not it will still charging so right now it's messed up a little bit because it's consuming by my battery in proper curtailment but it's one of the issues i have right now uh, import cost 28 cents and export because i was exporting during negative prices so it charged me three cents if curtailment doesn't work properly yeah you can be paying like a few dollars a day just for exporting yeah if it doesn't work it's not worth it Right now, it's only my setup, yeah. For most people, it will properly work. It will be in standby at this point. And anyways, this is what it supports. I'll just show you, let's say, if you want to add uh, what kind of vendors it supports, you can do this. And let's, let's do batteries and solar. And you see, this is the uh, devices supports. I'll just give you a link. 
it's way more than when I started. Wow, they added like maybe five more vendors. A lot of people onboarding devices and they're very busy. And this is my one of the complaints to Ember. Like uh, it's nearly impossible to get any support. So if something doesn't work properly on your system, it will take you a month to like resolve it, at least a month. For me, like just to get initial reply it took two weeks or two or three weeks. And then to actually escalate to the right tech uh, engineer, it took like another week. So I'm just like talking roughly to a person who can actually solve the issue. And again, because my, st my setup is not standard, we have two end phase gateways and uh, one of the uh, meters, those like local CT meters, they're not properly installed and like the system is not reading something that it's supposed to read. Anyway, so it's like mm, curtailment does not work the way it should work. See, my bills, my last bill is $40 after all the credits applied. Okay, so usage, devices, you can add your car as well. And in devices, you can actually go under your plan. And in here, you can control my battery. You will have some kind of unusual activities. So you can either charge battery, dispatch battery when prices are very high for expert, preserve battery if some storm is coming, stuff like that, yeah. In addition to your Tesla control. If everything works, you never have to touch it. It's all automatically done. So the whole beauty of the whole Ember thing is automation. There is like a lot of stuff going on in the background. And as an end consumer, we just see a fraction of how it's actually working. And in here you can see uh, breakdowns. So just showing you roughly. So total earnings, it's probably it was dispatching battery very early or in the middle of the night because during the day solar is useless. So with Ember, like if you just thinking what to do, like in terms of uh, investing in solar or battery, I think it, buying solar panels and installing does not make any sense anymore. Just get as big battery as you can, like 40 plus kilowatt. And so if you have battery and Ember, you can be earning money. Yeah. And with solar, it just, unless you're using like very a lot and you have like charging cars at home all the time and I don't know, running some kind of bakeries, I don't know, is it constant power consumption? Then solar panel makes sense. But if it's just normal house, I think these days it makes more sense to just buy a bigger battery, multiple batteries. Yeah, and earn money when you're not using them. When you log into Ember from your workstation, you can uh, actually generate a uh, API key and access their uh, API endpoint. So this is listed uh, under like for developers tab. And basically you can get, uh, once you get your sites ID, and then you can get usage prices and stuff like that. It's pretty interesting to play if you like want to tinker around. So for example, uh, simple requests, like it's uh, just get call you get your site after with the uh, token you just generated. And after you get your site, you can get multiple like forecast prices, current price, usage. Uh, you just paste site ID. And based on that, it will get you the data. For example, it's crunching some data. It's just for viewing. And uh, this code node is not properly parsing everything, but at least some data can get me like total average and stuff like that. Yeah, you can play with the data. There is a lot of, as you can see, like uh, the report by five minute chunks and you can only query past seven days. So you have to shift the window seven days, seven days. And based on that, you can stitch them together and basically get your usage for every five minutes. It's pretty cool to play just to get some idea. I'm still going to stick with Amber for at least a few months until, let's see, if they can fix my curtailment stuff. But yeah, in general, for most people, if you have more or less newer system installed, 
should work as is. Yeah, no need to like go back and forth with a tech support. But if you have some older system and then you had some extension within your system or some non-standard setup, yeah, it's going to be a nightmare to make it work. I think it's possible to make it work, but it just will take time. Maybe your local installer to go back to the site and move things around some CT meters or something, depending on the issue you have. Anyways, so this is my quick review with Ember. Use my code. Yeah, got you 120 bucks off. I think it's until the end of the year. They credit you $10 every month for 12 months. So it's a pretty good deal.